only at this facility we produce thousands of bombers per month and if we are talking about FPVs we produce hundreds of thousands per month. This war wasn't supposed to look like this. Russia's multi-billion dollar military machine forged in steel and secrecy is being outpaced not by NATO, not by billion dollar defense giants, but by 150 volunteers armed with laptops and soldering irons. From cluttered basements and weekend Zoom calls, they've built battlefield tools that can blind drones, destroy tanks, and change the course of combat all in a matter of weeks. No contracts, no delays, just urgency and brilliance. While global powers debate and stall, these engineers move fast. And their results? They're rewriting the rules of modern warfare. Let's dive in. The war that sparked a revolution. When Russia launched its full-scale invasion in February 2022, the world watched with horror. Analysts predicted Ukraine would fall in days. NATO scrambled for meetings. Defense giants offered billion-dollar solutions, slow, bureaucratic, and far too late. But on the ground, Ukraine didn't have the luxury of waiting. A few Ukrainian veterans, engineers, and foreign allies realized the hard truth. Drones from Amazon and GoFundMe campaigns wouldn't save a country. They needed something radically different. So they built it. That's how Defense Tech for Ukraine, or DTU, began. Not as a government program, but as a desperate, urgent response from those who refused to sit and watch. From the first week of the invasion, this network of volunteers started working. No budget, no office, just calls, coding, testing, fixing. Soldiers were dying. Every hour counted. While traditional defense contractors buried ideas in layers of red tape, DTU skipped the hierarchy entirely. Soldiers on the front lines tested devices in real combat and gave feedback straight to the engineers. One prototype failed, a new version was ready the next week. And this wasn't just a few gadgets. They were building battlefield-changing tech, tools Russia didn't see coming. This was the start of a new kind of warfare. Agile, crowdfunded, volunteer-driven. It wasn't polished, it wasn't perfect, but it worked. And it kept Ukraine fighting in its darkest hours. Because when survival is on the line, innovation doesn't wait for permission. It just begins. No suits, no meetings, just results. What truly sets DTU apart isn't just what they build, it's how they build it. There are no boardrooms, no endless PowerPoint slides, no corporate jargon, just six weekly conference calls split between English and Ukrainian teams where engineers talk directly to soldiers using their gear under live fire. That's it. Every DTU invention is shaped by combat not theory. A frontline soldier explains what's going wrong, and a few days later, a developer uploads a fix. Then the next test begins. The cycle never stops. Carl Larson, DTU's co-founder and a veteran of both Iraq and Ukraine, says the urgency is what keeps them sharp. If we don't move fast, Russia will, and people will die. That pressure fuels everything. Jonathan Lippert, a civilian tech entrepreneur turned wartime innovator, joined after seeing someone on social media delivering body armor on their own. That moment flipped a switch. He realized the war wasn't just for generals to solve. It was personal. Together, Larson and Lippert built a space where ideas aren't filtered by bureaucracy. If something works, it goes. If it doesn't, it's torn apart and rebuilt. Speed, feedback, purpose. That's the DTU method. From garage to battlefield, fiber optic game changer. One of DTU's biggest breakthroughs 
came from an idea borrowed from the enemy. In early 2024, Russian drones using fiber optic communication were spotted in Ukraine. Unlike traditional drones that rely on wireless signals and can be jammed or tracked, these drones stayed invisible. No radio waves, no signal to intercept. Just a thin cable trailing behind, guiding them with near-perfect stealth. Troy Smothers, a U.S. Marine veteran, saw the reports and got to work. In just three months, he built his own version of a fiber optic drone and flew it straight to Ukraine. When DTU got involved, they made it cheaper, faster, and even more reliable. Then they gave the entire design away, for free, to the Ukrainian military. That decision changed everything. With the schematics in hand, Ukrainian forces began mass-producing fiber optic drones these machines could now carry explosives, fly for 20 minutes, and strike deep targets without ever showing up on enemy radars. This wasn't just a clever upgrade. It was a complete shift in battlefield dynamics. And it all started in a garage, powered by urgency, not funding. DTU didn't just catch up to Russia, it nearly leapfrogged them. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. The invisible threat that Russia can't stop. Fiber optic drones don't just fly, they disappear. Unlike standard FPV drones that rely on radio signals and can be jammed or tracked, these drones move in silence. The signal runs through a thin cable invisible to electronic warfare systems. There's no telltale noise in the radio spectrum, no way to trace the operator. Just a drone, flying low and deadly, with no warning. Ukrainian engineers quickly saw the power of this. Some models now carry up to 12 pounds of explosives. Others use 25-mile spools to hit deep Russian positions, artillery units, air defenses, and even command posts. Russia still has the edge in drone accuracy and camera tech, largely due to Chinese parts, but Ukraine is adapting faster. Their drones are lighter, cheaper, and easier to operate. And with every month, that gap narrows. One of Russia's best drones, the Kanyaz Vandal, once destroyed a HIMARS launcher, but its heavy cable limits its mobility. Ukrainian drones use lighter fiber, giving them better speed and range. And just when Russia thought it had the upper hand, Ukraine struck the heart of its drone supply chain, crippling a key fiber optics factory 400 miles behind enemy lines. The message was clear. Nowhere is safe now. Innovation on a shoestring. While Russia relies on government-funded labs, and centralized control. DTU thrives on chaos and turns it into progress. With just 150 volunteers, most working nights and weekends, DTU has delivered battlefield-ready tech in weeks, not years, and not for billions. One example, the shotgun drone. It's exactly what it sounds like. A drone with a mounted, recoilless shotgun that can take out enemy drones mid-air. The concept feels like something from a video game, but in Ukraine, it's already being tested. Then there's the $200 fiber optic conversion kit. DTU didn't just build it, they refined it, scaled it, and open-sourced it. Soldiers can now modify existing drones in the field with almost no training. And if they lose the manual, DTU prints QR codes on sun visors to access it digitally. This isn't flashy tech, it's practical, it's fast, and it works. DTU also partners with Ukraine's official defense platform, Brave One, and groups like Kyiv Defenders to train operators and distribute gear. Instead of one big company running everything, it's a swarm of makers, hackers, and field testers all working together. That's why DTU isn't just a group, it's a movement. 
a wartime innovation engine that never sleeps. When volunteers outpace superpowers, DTU isn't just building drones, it's challenging the entire idea of how military technology should work. Consider this. The F-35 program took decades and cost over $1.7 trillion. The Zumwalt-class destroyer? $7.5 billion per ship, with only three ever built. Compare that to DTU. With a budget smaller than a single missile, they've delivered battlefield-changing tech in weeks. It's not just cheaper, it's faster, leaner, and more responsive. DTU engineers aren't waiting for approval. They build, test, and deploy on the go. Soldiers give feedback in real time. Does a drone fail? They tweak it. Does a new threat appear? They are already working on a countermeasure. This model has shaken NATO's defense circles. If 150 volunteers can do this from their basements and garages, what does that say about trillion-dollar defense industries? Russia's response has been telling. It's trying to copy DTU's speed and creativity, but within a centralized system. Volunteer accelerators like Ushkwinik have emerged, but they still follow top-down military structures. DTU's real strength lies in its flexibility. It doesn't matter who made the idea or where it came from. If it works, it spreads fast. And in modern warfare, speed is everything. The future is being built in real time. DTU's impact goes far beyond drones. It's building an entire ecosystem of battlefield innovation, one that stretches from suburban garages to frontline trenches. Right now, their team is working on acoustic detection tools, sub $10,000 radar systems, and new drone-mounted net guns that can trap enemy UAVs mid-air. They're even experimenting with vertical takeoff bombers and rapid-deploy signal jammers, all developed through the same fast feedback loop. Build, test, improve, repeat. In June, three new drone-mounted prototypes began field trials. That kind of turnaround is unheard of in traditional defense systems. One of their boldest designs, the ICLO drone-mounted shotgun, shows how DTU thinks differently. It's not about high-priced, high-tech gear. It's about what works under fire. A flying, remotely triggered weapon that sneaks up on enemy drones and blasts them out of the sky. Simple, brutal, effective. This mindset of relentless adaptation and open sharing has created something NATO planners can't ignore. DTU is writing the playbook for modern asymmetric warfare. And as battlefield needs change, DTU changes with them. What they're proving, again and again, is that the future of war won't be built in factories. It'll be built in fragments, by anyone, anywhere, with the courage to try. This isn't just a story about drones or war. It's a story about people, ordinary volunteers pushing the limits of what's possible with nothing but grit, urgency, and a belief that speed can save lives. While empires stall and giants sleep, DTU moves. One weekend at a time. One innovation at a time. And in doing so, they've shown the world a new model of defense, one built on collaboration not command. This is the battlefield of tomorrow, built in real time, and the question is no longer if others will follow, but when. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.